So we're starting a new project today, and I don't have a lot to reach for, so I'm just going to reach for these. So it's kind of hard for me to actually start this custom yet because I don't have the trucks yet. But I've got some similar things that we're going to use. So I'll show you what we're going to do, and then I'll show you how all three of these plus to the two that's coming in the mail are going to tie into what we're doing. So we are doing Shaw's truck from open season. And Shaw's truck is supposed to be like a 56 GMC blue chip pickup truck. And uh, there's a couple ways that we can tell that that's true. There's a front picture of his truck. That sure looks like a blue chip truck. What makes a blue chip a blue chip? Well, blue chip has fog lights in the little where the bullet nose bumper points would be regularly. Uh, also, we've got the typical GMC grill. Now, obviously, Shaw's truck is animated because open season is an animated movie. So we don't exactly have a real vehicle to work with, but that works in our favor because well I'll tell you why when we get to the back to the castings so there are two versions of this truck there's the version from open season and then there's this version from open season scared silly open season scared silly it's animated a little better in open season scared silly uh, this fender has more texture of rust. It's got a dent there. Uh, the way the rust runs down some of the chrome on the grill or on the under the emblem is actually a little better animated in Scared Silly. However, Scared Silly also has Shaw's Hunting's crossed out, and it says Shaw's Hiking Tours and Sign Painting. But the truck itself is still pretty true to the original truck in the movie it's got some primer on the front fender it's got some primer on the back fender driver's side we're looking at a little stripe of primer on the top of the uh, wheel well and then you can't see it there's some primer on the uh, little kind of quarter panel behind <laughs> since the door is open you can't really tell um, there's the back of the truck. There are two tires, uh, a toolbox. I think that's like a bucket of oil, and I don't know what this is. I can handle the two tires, and I might have something that we can make work as a toolbox. That's all I'm going to really worry about. I think I've got one more picture of it, this picture I started with here. Um, so for the most part, this isn't going to be real hard to do. So I didn't make up that blue chip truck. That's what they're called. This advertisement's from 55, but um, that's what GMC called these trucks. And um, it was supposed to be like um, Chevy had the task force. Well, G GMC's version of task force was blue chip from what I, the best of my understanding. And this is the front of a 56 GMC blue chip. It's got fog lights in the bumper. It's got the horizontal bars in the grill. It's got the turn signals out here in the trim underneath the headlight. Now one thing Shaw's truck, again, being animated, does not have these little, uh, what do you want to call those, rails, I'll say. I, there's a name for those little bumps in the hood, but I can't think of what they're called. I'll say body line. Shaw's truck didn't have those body lines because Shaw's truck is animated. Now, you can see this hood's flat. That actually helps us out because 
of how we're going to have to go about making this custom out of several different castings. So, somebody took their time to put a 360 animation of Shaw's truck on a website. So, let's look at that. Even though it's a scared silly version, it gives us a pretty good idea of this truck. You'll have to excuse me, I've already uh, screen recorded this once, so when I stop it, we have a play button in the, in the way. Uh, and I can't zoom in on the video, but you can still, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. I'll kind of direct you. So, again, Scared Silly version of the truck, which is what this is, happens to have a tailgate. Uh, it also has some bumper stickers and things like that on it, which we're not going to worry about. Um... Now, if you notice on that license plate, above where it says, in shoot em, above where the EM is, it says 56. It's got a 56 tag on it, which further proves that this is a 56 GMC. Um, so, no tailgate on the custom we're doing. Uh, now, we do have to pay attention to some of the primer that's around the fender, of the back fender of the truck. And then coming around the side, the patch of um, primer on the side of the passenger fender. Uh, looking at the grill here, you can see the similarities now between this grill and that um, real blue chip truck. This has horiz or yeah, this has vertical bars, and the original has horizontal bars in the grill but overall for an animated truck I think they did pretty good I must be getting ready to end this video oh there's another part to this this was the 360 I was thinking of uh, there's the interior you got there which we don't have to worry too much about so that'd be it um, I thought I took another video of this truck I did. Here's a clip from the movie of this truck. So he's chasing after Elliot, the deer. Shaw's kind of the villain of this movie, but I still, I still like him. Uh, you can kind of see his his gun behind him in the gun rack there on the truck, but and then this color of this truck is going to be kind of difficult. Let me back this up just just a tad bit, not that far back. But uh, once he comes out of the water, I'm gonna stop it. This color is difficult to get right because um, the color. I don't know why, because they actually animated the paint right. When paint is wet, it gets, when oxidized paint is wet, it looks darker. This truck is significantly darker in this scene when they're in the river than it is at any other point in the whole movie. And for some reason, the color of paint that I bought matches this darker paint, not the lighter paint. So, I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, I'm going to see if I can find the right color paint in the meantime. But if I can't, we just won't worry about it too much. So having seen what Shaw's truck looks like, you're probably wondering, why in the world do I have a 58 Chevy up here? Because that is a different body style. It has quad headlights. It has a different type of hood, and it has wider, the, the hood shape is different, making the top of the fenders wider. Well, that answer would be pretty simple. M2 does not make the 
55 to 57 body style of trucks. Maestro does, and Maestro does a good job. Uh, but the cab of the Maestro truck I'm using for something else, so I just have a bed and a bumper. Matchbox makes a blue chip. It's got the right grill in it. it. I think it's even got fog lights in it. This is a power grab, which I bought for this. Uh, I specifically bought another one of these little Matchbox trucks for the uh, this custom because I already have this Sheriff's model. Now, I'll just open this up because I'm going to have to open it up later. The grill on this truck You're probably going to want to know, let me back up, you're probably going to want to know why I can't just use the Matchbox truck. Because it looks pretty much like Shaw's truck. That answer is simpler than you might think. <laughs> this Matchbox is quite small, and it would be rather difficult to do some things that I need to do. And also, the bed is an insert. And unfortunately, I cannot drop the bed inside of the bed of this truck down so that the rails are even with the um, the side of the truck because then it would hit the wheels. And then we'd have this post issue and I can't cut the tailgate out because of the post because then the, there would be nothing... To hold the truck together. Um, there's just several things that come up with this model that we're just going to use an M2 and we're going to make it work. Now we're not going to use this one for the simple fact this got a spare tire on it. So uh, I was going to just use this bed and I may still use this bed, but the truck coming in the mail is an M2 with this bed with no spare tire. It's virtually just like this bed. I've got a truck like that, but I didn't want to take it apart. Um, the only issue I have with M2's bed is it has wheel wells, and there are no wheel wells in a step-side bed. That's the whole point of a step-side bed, is that it doesn't have wheel wells in it like this one. So, uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do in respect to that. I don't know if I'm going to cut them out of the M2 or if I'm just going to take the bed off and use this bed because these beds, I put this bed on the M2 that I didn't want to use for the custom and it fits perfect. Obviously, I had to modify it a little bit, but it fits good. So, we're using an M2, which has more of a flat hood. It's got an indent, but it's flatter than, uh, more, more similar to Shaw's truck. Now, we're stuck with a Chevy grill and quad headlights. How are we going to get away with that? M2 makes a fleet option. I'm not using this truck, but M2 makes a fleet option GMC. The fleet option has singular round headlights, and M2 makes those little inserts fit right into the quad headlight hole. Or I should say the dual headlight hole, because there's only two on each side. Um, so that's how that's going to work. So that leaves us with an issue for the grill, but I thought of that too not using this truck either, but M2 makes the GMC style grill. I don't know exactly how all of this is going to work together. I'm going to have to modify, take that center bar out of this grill, and I'm going to have to do a lot of off-camera modifications. But we're somehow going to use this grill and this grill and these lights on this truck. And I might use this cab just for the simple fact that the, the one that I ordered, I think the hood and doors open up. and accidentally dumped a drawer out on the floor. 
and in picking things up from other customs, I found two tires. They're not the same size. So, I just found the two tires that go in the bed of the truck. So, between my truck from my diorama that has a bunch of tires in it, I found the M2 wheels that I want to use. These are actually from the 57 Chevy uh, Bel Air, but um, they're the same wheels that uh, M2 uses for all of the little things like that. Uh, took a white wall and then I found some junk tires out of there. So this was the base from the Bel Air. Been sitting out in the sandbox. This is all that's left of it. Uh, so you can see the axles are kind of rusty. But since I have to paint the wheels anyway, it doesn't matter much. I ordered this truck off the internet. It's a very cute truck. I ordered it specifically for the singular headlights. Which I can pop out of there. And use on this truck. Now if this truck opened up, I'd take the hood and doors off of this one. And I'd keep... I'd uh, just switch everything over, but nothing opens up on this, so I don't want to strip this one. I like this one. Uh, so, not that I dislike this one, but it didn't intrigue me as much as the box truck that came with it. Um, this one, however, is a blue chip truck, which since we were just talking about that, I found that extremely ironic when I opened this up and was like, oh. It's got a blue chip on the door. It's so pretty cool. I think I mentioned already. But <clears throat> I found some wheels and then I sourced some tires out of my drawer. Or out of my... No, it was out of my tire truck. Then I ordered this. <clears throat> which matches the red one I used in the example. Except you can see someone's painted the lights on this one silver. Uh, also, the case on this is not in the greatest shape. It's kind of busted up, and it's been put back on the base with button head Allen, Allen screws, Allen head screws. So uh, once I go get my Allen wrench and take this off, we'll start figuring out what we need to do to make the right kind of grill that we need. Well, two hours later, I have the grill built. I don't know if you guys remember what I told you I was going to build that grill out of. I'll set the camera down here. But it fits good after all this time. Fits right in there just like it's supposed to. So cut the face off of this 56 GMC, 57 GMC couldn't remember and um, this is a blue chip truck also we talked about that so I, I started to drill the rivets out and then I realized no I can just cut that so cut that so that one's done uh, you wouldn't believe how they put the windows in this thing front window and back window are two separate pieces and then the roof is also riveted on there which if you look at the piece of the roof. I don't know why they can't just cast that into the into the top of the truck. I don't know why this has to be a plastic piece, but it it is on every single one of these castings. Filed some on the chassis. We're going to use the four-wheel drive chassis. Um, it just looks better for this kind of backwoodsy type of truck that Shaw has. Uh, I cut the tailgate off of this, like the truck's supposed to be, and even though I cut it, it broke off part of the bed, so I straightened that out with some toothpicks, and once you paint it and weather it and all that jazz, it ain't gonna look too bad. Uh, so thank goodness that's done. I suppose I should see if the bumper fits on there, but... 
everything that is here in chrome was in gray plastic on the front of this truck. I've got one of those trucks right behind me. So here's the grill on that truck. And the only part of it that I have is those horizontal lines. I filed all of this gray part off. I kept the little turn signals. Ooh, losing the camera because it's sitting on top of the vise. So after looking at that, you can see, maybe, you can see all that's left. <laughs> so, then the bumper still fits up with that good. So that was two hours just making that. I had to take the bumper off of the Maui truck because the bumper that was on the chassis for the red truck was for a fleet side bed and the brackets were longer. So it stuck out too far. And I also used the tires off of that red truck so the little tires can go back in my parts bed and um, the bigger tires still fit. Ooh. Little tire, the bigger tires still fit on these smaller wheels. Which is good. So this is a box of things I have to paint. This is a box of things I don't have to paint. And I don't need that. So I'm getting ready to wire wheel this. Got my little rotary tool out. And um, before I do any of that though, I wanted to show you, we got most of the paint off of this. And they signify, although the backwards they signify that this is a 4x4 four four. Uh, yeah, so most of the paints out this isn't a huge deal I just have to get the paint um, the loose paint off of that and the cab here uh, interestingly enough paint did not come off the screws um, but it did for the most part come off of the cab pretty well uh, I have some issues with paint up inside the cab though, which is going to be kind of hard to get to with this. I might have to use a smaller um, brush on the end of that. So we'll get you after this. So this is the base, all nice and shiny. The only thing that had to be painted on the top part of the base is these steps. I wanted to make sure I got all the paint out of those. But then the leaf springs and the whole underneath chassis is uh, all going to be painted. So I had to make sure I got all the loose paint out of that. And then the cab here. Got it all out of the roof. But for this isn't loose and you don't see that so I'm not worried about it and um, the stuff that's still stuck in there is is not loose so I'm not worried about it you know if it was out here where you'd see it I'd worry about it a little more but it's not ready for primer so I've got everything plus one in here um, I just thought of something I hope I didn't leave the top of the truck also nope I see it because the top needs repainted because I use 2x paint which you guys know how much I hate 2x rust-oleum paint because nine times out of ten I have trouble with it well it sprayed really good the first couple of coats and then it did this thing looks like I dumped a bunch of sand on it it looked nice it even had a little faded where the paint had run off of the corner there I thought you know I'm gonna keep that that looked cool but then I thought no it needs another coat of paint well that that was a stupid idea 
So uh, I will get all of that crap off of there and redo the lit top. The wheels, however, look nice. I don't want them to be perfect because they're wheels on an old backwoodsy truck. So the fact that they got a little bit of overspray in different parts of them is fine with me because they're still mostly the same color. All I did with those was I painted them storm gray and then gave them a black clear coat. And the chrome stuff, which I think is in here, all I did with that was give it a black clear coat. Uh, black dashboard I painted primer gray even though the real in real life whatever body color the truck is would match the uh panels and things under here the truck in the movie is in fact a primer gray dashboard with a black seat so i just kind of took a chrome uh, or i took a clear coat i'm sorry a black clear coat and painted this uh, chrome stuff up grill didn't come out perfect but for the three hours that i have in building it i'm pretty happy with it uh bumper i really like doing beater vehicles because that makes the stuff not have to be perfect you know it's not like that jeep that i did uh the well, the Ford that I did the last custom was kind of the same way. I really like that stuff. Uh, I like doing nice shiny vehicles, but it is refreshing to do something that, you know, if I wanted black chrome, this would not have sufficed. Oops, come on. This would not have sufficed for black chrome because it's speckly. For old worn out chrome that's kind of dirty and just needed to be not shiny it suffices satisfies me uh this little red die cast thing is the weight out of the uh racing chevy cheyenne that we did a custom on a while back of the neighbor's truck and uh i still had that weight and i thought you know what it's not real square, but it looks like a random object that is going to take the place of the red toolbox in Shaw's truck. Don't mind this. This is a billboard. I'm not done with it. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Shaw's truck. That was, that was a separate thing. So this is the base which I painted storm gray and then gave it a matte clear coat. <clears throat> I like that you could still see the M2 Machines stamp on there, emblem. Uh, the matte clear coat just kind of took some of the metallic out of the storm gray, which was kind of the idea. And painted the sides of it as well. I did not paint the top because you don't see that part. I'm going to go over this, uh, the step, in cab steps there with, uh, a black Sharpie. The bed, I'm going to hand paint the red fender on this side, or brown fender it would be. Um, but for the most part, paint laid pretty well. Uh, the Like I say, the discoloring on this truck doesn't upset me as much because it's not supposed to be perfect. So like this little lighter colored area here doesn't bother me too bad. Uh, and after painting over the wood on the end, it doesn't look horrible. It doesn't bother me. I'm happy with that. <clears throat> now the cab, I want to show you, I used Rust-Oleum 2X Blue, I didn't bring the paint can with me, um, 
I'll tell you what color the blue this is. But then I used, and it was satin. Well, the satin wasn't dark, or the satin wasn't matte enough, so I used a matte clear coat, which was also made by Rust-Oleum. The satin, or the 2X Rust-Oleum did not agree with the Rust-Oleum matte clear coat, and it actually started to wash the paint off of the primer. Which is weird because I waited a week between painting each thing. So, oh, well, I didn't notice all of the uh, cracking and glazing in the paint. I just noticed the where the paint had, uh, you can see where it's thinner on all of the curves and things. I'm going to do my best to not have to repaint this and just make it all kind of work together. Again, it's an old backwoods truck. <laughs> it's not perfect. It's not supposed to be perfect. I am very unhappy with the back here, and I, that may lead me to repaint this. Because this did crack quite a bit on the back. Looks terrible. And I'm thinking that it's going to look terrible even with the bed on there. Yeah, I may repaint that anyway. Also, there's there's only so much cheating that I can do with the, <laughs> the weathering stuff before it becomes not Shaw's truck. So, I repainted the top. I had to do a lot of things to it. And I finally wrote... Uh, this is plastic, okay, so I can't use paint stripper. So, I rubbed... Um, paint thinner over this thing for about 15 minutes and then sprayed this paint in a little cup and hand painted it on there like it was testers model paint and I found something critical that I forgot to do <laughs> this is the front bumper and um it does not match the grill or the back bumper because I forgot to paint it. Uh, so, I ran over it with a black Sharpie and let it sit for a little over 24 hours. And then I took a Q-tip with rubbing alcohol on it and waited to, I squeezed most of the rubbing alcohol out of the Q-tip the cotton and then rubbed it on there so it just kind of smeared it around and took some of it off but not all of it i'm going to say it's good enough because not everything on this truck has to match i guess the last time you guys saw this i hadn't done any of the details either so i don't necessarily like that the cups on the back of the tail light the bezels if you will are uh that long on this bed but they are so and they're black on the model so i painted them black also looked at lots and lots of pictures and footage of shaw's truck and kind of took a uh kind of an average of where the primer was because the scared silly truck is different than the um movie truck they both have a primer up here. I liked in that little art design that someone made, they put some rust under the emblem. Oh, the chrome is not showing up on the camera. I promise there's chrome emblem under or on top of that rust. Oh, I did the windshield wipers. I wonder why it shows up on the wipers and not on the emblem. And I did the primer on the side, which I thought this looked really bad. And then I looked at a picture, and I was like, oh, no, that's actually okay. And trying to make some of this cracking paint look like it was authentic to the truck, I added some extra primer and things along the back. Uh, you won't see, if you are going to see all of this, if it was a flatbed truck, I would have repainted it. But... 
it only did it on the back and I just gave it more primer and made sure that you're not going to see all of it. You're just going to see around the top part of the cab. And painted the brown fender. That is several coats of <laughs> some color of brown of casters that I have used a lot before. That was several coats of two dollar testers paint. <laughs> What's the name of this? Flat rust. That's what it's called. That's why I use it for rust. And then the primer is glossier than I wanted it to be, but I will ruin this if I give it another matte clear coat. That was Model Master. <laughs> and I don't know what happened to this jar. But... Ooh, I'm glad the lid was on. So I'm going to start reassembling this, also in that artwork that I was mentioning. They put a piece of duct tape on the seat, and I kind of like that. I thought, yeah, that's fitting, so I stuck that on there too. I also made the shifter chrome. That was just my own personal touch. I also painted the exhaust pipe and the matte rust, or flat rust, and then this being a four-wheel drive truck and also being a GMC truck, my first thought was it's probably got a new process transfer case. So the transfer case is red. <laughs> Later it registered with me. This is a 56, so it's probably actually a Napco. But I already did it red, and that's okay with me. So I'm going to start reassembling this. The wheels are the perfect color. Very happy with the wheels. I did the blue on the bottom of the dashboard. Um, and then since one of our lights was green because I lost the other one, it kind of went off of the table. I painted that silver and then painted the headlight white. And so that it matched, I did the same with the white one. And that is actually right looking at the movie truck. It had silver bezels, not white or body color. Our paint was satin aqua, since I couldn't think of what color it was the other day. Alrighty guys, Shaw's truck is complete, and I must say, it looks just like the movie, or as close as I could get it. I added a couple rust spots. I don't know if you saw those previously, but I did. Uh, there's some primer, as I showed before. You guys now get to see the truck back together with the uh, lights and everything in there. <laughs> well, he lost his load. Looks decent. This is the best side, though. Got the fender with the primer spots in the right place, which was kind of hard to do. Get them to be shaped like the ones in the movie. Got the bumper on there. I put a hanging exhaust pipe. I noticed in one spot in the film it had it on there. And I'm almost positive now that I look at this that maybe this was on the other side. But um, I matched it up with the model. So don't blame me. <laughs> blame either the animators of the movie or GM because it's on the side that it should be on. So uh, we'll put this on the turntable for you. You can kind of see inside. Probably could better with a light. You can see the duct tape seat uh, and the chrome stick shift. Got the headlights there looking good. Uh, all Gordy sees is a busted headlight. <laughs> all I, see is a busted headlight I was putting this on the turntable when I realized I forgot something that I said at the beginning of the video I was going to do. Put the mirrors on this thing. 
And um, since there was no mirrors on this model to begin with, there were no holes. And Shaw's truck, <clears throat> according to the movie, the mirrors are only attached by one point on the whole truck. Right there. They're not attached. They're weird West Coast mirrors. They're not attached at the top, which for this type of mirror is unusual. But it's got them now. So like, comment, subscribe for more. Have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video.